name is Heather Murray. Welcome to the Mixed Media Portrait Memento Painting Class. I know you'll have a lot of fun today. Um, we're going to be using this image and creating a wonderful portrait painting from it with lots of elements to personalize it. So I want you to, to think about what kind of picture you'd like to use, uh, whether it be a portrait of a family or um, a grouping or an individual or even a pet. We can employ these techniques to so many different things. So I look forward to having fun and playing with you with art and these materials and uh, you'll be creating a masterpiece in no time. I know it. <laughs> I'm sure. And uh, so get yourself all ready to learn and I'm kind of ready to get going. So let's go and make some art. <laughs> I've been creating these memory portrait paintings as commissions over the years and I'm ready to share my techniques and my tips with you. I'm hoping that you'll come out with a project that you'll enjoy and that you'll have the skills and the know-how to put together your own memory portrait painting for someone you care about, uh, from a friend, a colleague, uh, or just someone who admires your art. I think you'll find it very fulfilling and I encourage you to have fun. Hello, welcome to the Memory Portrait Painting Project um, where you will create a wonderful gift, um, an artistic, creative, personal gift for someone special in your life. Uh, we'll start with the supplies that you'll need for this particular project and I'll just uh, show you a few of the materials that I work with and um, you can certainly adapt this to your own uh, your own taste. Uh, certainly all materials and brands will be different wherever you shop but here's uh, my acrylic paints, a variety of brushes, fine and uh, wide brushes as you can see, uh, a palette a little bit um, overused but nonetheless has a few miles yet to go. <laughs> Yours might look a little bit more cleaner than this. Uh, there's a china pencil down there, um, a cup with my water in it uh, for washing brushes, some scissors, some pointy small scissors, uh, gesso and uh, I use matte gel medium. You can just use gel medium or um, you can even use a gloss medium if you like the effect. I like the matte effect, so I use matte. Um, yeah, so that's all you need. It's, you've got everything right here. And of course your photo image on a heavy matte photo paper and a small canvas that I'm using for this project. So now that you have everything in front of you, you're ready to go. Okay, now we have our photo. This is where we start. Um, I started with the color and photograph of my daughter at two and a half years old so it's not current but it's not too old either and my aim is to take this particular color photo on my computer that I've scanned onto my computer and move it into uh, change it into a black and white photo so I'm using my Picasa photo editor um, and I'm not advertising for Picasso. You use whatever you like. <laughs> and, uh, and then I will have her in black and white, which is where I like to start. This is the kind of um, base that I like to work with on my painting, my portrait, is black and white. Um, I'm also thinking about printing it and what size I want to print it. Uh, you might want to experiment a little bit about with this. And the paper that I use for printing is a photo mat quality paper which is a bit of a heavier cardstock. I think this works best so I recommend it. Okay we're in my studio now. We've put the image aside for a few minutes and I'm you can see that there's a variety of colors that I've dabbed onto my palette. Um, I like to mix my colors. I don't tend to put the colors pure onto the canvas. Um, I like the variance that the uneven quality gives to a painting. So I'm mixing something that has a bit of green tones uh, with my blue, uh, a little turquoisey, and 
I'm just filling the whole canvas up with this. This is a 9 by 12 canvas I'm using and it's stretched so it doesn't need to be framed. If you are dealing with a commission you may want to establish what color family um, your customer is looking for from the onset just so that uh, you're a, a kind of meeting their needs in terms of uh, a mutual vision. And I'll just continue to cover the canvas. Um, I'm using a little matte medium as well just to give it a little bit more flow. And I like the uneven quality. I don't like um, the paint to be too solid across the background. I like to pick up the texture in the brush and um, have different shades of the same color family in my backdrop. I just find it gives it a, the whole portrait a more painterly look. And it's fun. <laughs> As you can see, I've also added some white paint or acrylic paint or pure gesso uh, mixed in, blended in with my paint. And you can see how that gives it a little bit more of an illuminary kind of feel. Um, I like gesso because you get a little bit more texture from it than, than straight white acrylic paint. So I tend to use a lot of it in my work. And I'll just continue painting till I've, I've filled the whole canvas. Even if my whole canvas won't be in this shade, I find it easier to start and layer my painting this way. So there you go. This might seem really elementary and for those of you who have taken my classes before, you'll, I'll be a little repetitive here, but I'm assuming that some of you haven't. So one thing that I would like to stress about using your figure and your portrait is to basically cut out all the background as much as you can and don't miss little edges on fingers and toes. Uh, you'll want to capture every little nuance of this person. So. There's a lot of careful cutting going on, even though I'm using these not-so-precious scissors. They have a nice point, actually, and I like the size. I like working with tiny scissors to do this kind of a specific work. Um, you can see I'm cutting around my daughter's hair. She has a nice curly top, and I don't want to lose it. And it's, sometimes you can really change the character of somebody by taking off like a snippet too much. So you want to be very careful and not losing who that person is in your this chopping portion. I like to be very, very careful. I'd rather go a little around and a little outwards from the edge rather than chop up too, off too much because then you've lost it. And um, you are really trying to capture somebody completely as they are or as they were in that time period. Every little snip counts. Now that you have your image cut out very carefully, you want to figure out where you want to place it on the canvas. Um, it's a personal preference unless your, your client or customer has asked you for a particular um, 
view, but if you want to try uh, horizontal, that might work for you. Or you might look at uh, vertical. It's best when your canvas is dry to play around with this till you get what you, you think works best. Okay, our background's nice and dry, and you might have already collected some elements um, to put into your portrait. Um, I'm thinking that I wanted a farm theme for my daughter, um, just because, um, but you might find that um, you decide that you want somebody um, you know, with a cityscape behind them, or um, some kind of elements from their past, or a favorite hobby or sport, or uh, something that they were known for. Um, my daughter was pretty young here, so other than being kind of wonderful and, and sweet, um, and a, and a two-year-old, there isn't really too much more to say other than um, I thought it would be cute um, to have a farm theme. So I have some different um, ephemera here that I'm showing you. I've got a Kleenex tissue box um, and <laughs> various uh, photo elements that I've taken, um, I've taken from my computer and printed on matte photo paper and here's some very old uh, um, it's a notebook actually I think from a farmer so I thought that was really appropriate it's got lots of um, items that were maybe purchased in the market or sold at a market um, in old script and I'm placing thinking of where to place my daughter on this particular painting but I'm also thinking what will make it more interesting um, just the plain old background well we could do it but it's a little boring so I'm ripping the, the old net notebook apart and I love this, this script and I love the way the paper is aged like this and if you can find paper like this it's quite, um, quite a treat. And again I'm going to put some matte medium on the surface of my canvas and you can use other kinds of papers other than old um, ephemera. You can use um, wallpaper or um, you know some people there's some very fancy papers that are made for scrapbookers out there now and you can rip some of that, that up. There's Japanese papers and uh, lovely tissues that you can incorporate as well. So I'm making this, um, seeing how I can make this a little bit more flush with the bottom of my painting and as you can see I haven't cut it with scissors, I've ripped it at the top. I already have a natural edge at the bottom uh, but the ripping gives it a little bit of interest and it also blends better, I think, with the background. So that's kind of our ground. It can represent the ground um, or the back part of the background. Um, it'll be something for my daughter to sit on because she is in a sitting position in this image. <laughs> and I cover the, the total, um, all of the paper with matte medium and this has gone on rather flat. I've, as you can see, I've I've put matte medium on the back of the paper as well as on the canvas, so there's a good um, flush uh, kind of uh, thing happening there. And we'll do the same with uh, the image of my daughter as well. I'm going to cover the back with matte medium, and then I'm going to cover the canvas where she's going to be placed with matte medium as well. Again, you want to have the best kind of connection as possible between paper and canvas, otherwise you'll get a lot of bubbles. So this way it helps, you don't have to bray it as much or um, tamp it down if you get a lot of um, matte medium on both sides, as, as indicated here. There she goes. So I've thought about it a little bit before she was glued where I'd like to place her, but she sits nicely on the edge of that paper. And you'll wonder why she's in black and white, like why bother, why not print her in color? Well the color printers typically um, are not too accurate I find, and I like the idea of painting over the image. So it's almost like an underpainting, having the, the gray, black and gray image or the grayscale image underneath. You can play with the paint on top, and I will say play because it doesn't come easily, even though it looks like an easy procedure. Um, some people have told me that it takes a little while to get it right.
Okay, so here we are, and as it says in the title, a little hen adds whimsy, and I believe that's true. Um, I'm cutting out a, an old illustration from a children's um, vintage storybook, and it's very tiny, and again, I'm being careful with my scissors. And I just want the chicken or the hen on the nest. So I'm taking her apart that way. And I may keep some of the text for the rest of my painting. I'm not sure at this point. So I'll just take the hen and leave the text elsewhere. So, and positioning on it, I think it adds a little bit of extra fun to the piece. Um, when you're doing art with children featured, yeah, they're, it's really, I think, wise to put in a little bit of a playful element. Um, I think that people like that. I know I do. <laughs> Again, cutting carefully. And I will do the same thing as I did earlier. I'll put a little bit of um, matte medium on the back of my illustration or my, my picture there. And I'll also put some on the canvas. Um, it's an older piece of paper, so it might rip very easily so I'm careful with it. There it is. See? It's just a little tiny piece but I, I think it adds a little bit more to our um, picture. There's also a barn and I'm not sure where I'll put the barn at this stage but I know I want the chicken in the nest there. <laughs> so there she is sitting jauntily. And knowing that I have the chicken, it feels still a little plain to me. So I've also cut out a picture of a barn. I did have a picture of a cow, but I thought the cow would be a little bit too much. So the, the barn fits in a little bit nicer with this particular piece. And I'm finding I'm going to use a little bit of that text that we saw earlier that came from the children's book. And we'll just add that in too. And it does have a little mention of a hen in it, so I think that makes it uh, a little, a little more sweet. You can see the hen looked at her nest or at one nest, <laughs> and that's enough. It just adds a little bit extra and makes it fun. And you'll think that barn's just floating in the air, and we don't want it to float in the air, of course. Um, I'm adding some white, uh, some gesso paint into the background. You'll see what I'm doing in a minute. I'm kind of pulling the bottom half together so we don't have the floating effect. So I'll be adding the white and giving it a little bit of um, texture and adding a little white to also my script. Um, not so much that I'm going to be obscuring it but just so it blends in a little bit more and it doesn't pop out too much. So that there's a natural kind of a continuity to this. Now I'm just using white paint for this as well too. And it doesn't matter really whether you use gesso or white paint, I just had the white paint a little bit more available and I wanna pop it up a little bit more so that we have a definition from the sky to the earth and so that the barn isn't floating anymore. This is all something that you'll want to interpret for yourself. I mean, it's, it's very individual and unique, each piece that you do, but I think it will come together for you fairly naturally once you place the images on the canvas and you start to play with it a little bit.
Okay, you were wondering when we were going to add a little bit of color to this image and, and bring on the, the paint and the, the feeling of a painting as opposed to just a, a couple of images plunked down onto a canvas. So I am ready to add some color now. I'm, I'm again using a little bit more white paint here. Um, it just, sometimes I just can't use enough of it. I find it's a great, um, the white paint's a great healer. <laughs> Um, often I'll let the piece dry for a little bit and come back to it just to see how it's looking when it's dry because when it's wet it's often hard to tell. I want to also make the sky look a little bit more natural and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, I'm blending that color that I had before. I'm getting a little bit more gray tones in it this time and um, yeah, just punching it up a bit. We've got the, we want to have some definition between the sky and the earth, so this is my way of doing it. And sometimes it takes coming back a couple of times before you get what you want. I think the more you layer, the better. It, it, your painting comes out looking more interesting with the other colors and, and layers shining through. I've picked up a little yellow here in the sky. I don't know how that happened, but anyway, I'll blend that in and um, probably cover it again here here's some more white so you can see my process there really is no rhyme or reason to it i'm just looking at what tends to look better and feel better to me and um, i like to see a little bit of color shining through each layer if i can and i'll probably take out that yellow a bit because to me, the yellow is a bit um, off-putting with the sky. I'll, I'll probably use a smaller brush after a while to go around and get the details around the, the head and the barn, but here you're getting the general idea. Okay, we're adding a little bit of red um, acrylic paint now. Uh, I like the, the, a splash of red in my painting if I can. Um, and there's something about the nostalgia that um, is associated with a red barn. Uh, in this particular case, I'm just painting the roof rat. Uh, the whole barn may be too much. Uh, I don't want to take away from the image itself and from the portrait part of our painting. So I'm just adding a little bit of red to um, give a little bit of interest to this piece. And because it's a, it's a portrait of a child, again, brighter, more um, primary colors may add to the, the fun and the, the childlike quality of this piece. So I am, right now what I was doing there, it looked ridiculous, but what I'm doing is putting a little red on my hand from my brush and, and basically um, thinning it down enough so I can use a little bit on my daughter's face here for the cheeks and for the lips. I might as well because I already have red on my brush so I tend to try to use the color that, that I have on my brush at the time in as many areas as possible and uh, I don't like to waste my paint so it's a nice way to, to get the job done. And now you've got um, the China pencil, and it's a pencil I use um, just usually for small details like this, like the skyline. I'm using a bit of pencil just to define it a bit more. And it's permanent, so um, it's a lovely material to work with. You can see how that makes a difference already. And that's some raw umber brown, and I often I'll use that shade um, when I'm shading um, skin, like if I'm, especially if we've got dark shades. Uh, this particular portrait of my daughter, the, the original photograph was very highly shaded. So um, I would recommend that you have um, a picture that has somewhat high contrast to work with, but often you don't have that. Um, that wonderful uh, opportunity because you might be working from an, a, a picture that somebody has given you and you just work with what you have. So this particular one is not ideal because it is a lot in the shade, but nonetheless um, I'm painting the shaded portions and it's almost like paint by number. I'm painting the, the parts that are shaded 
with some raw umber. And I will we'll stress, I don't use a lot of paint when I'm doing this. With small pieces like this, or when I'm, I'm getting to skin tones, I tend not to put it on heavy. Um, there's barely any paint on that brush, and I might thin it out with a little bit of matte medium or a little bit of water, but I tend to not use too much paint because you can so easily overpaint these portraits. Um, it's easier to build, and so if you use a little color at a time and build it up, I think you, you get a lot more mileage and you end up keeping the integrity of the photograph. So um, I'm just lightly brushing over the shaded areas. Again, that's, it's becoming more painterly this way. And I'll use my fingers too. So I have a little bit of touching up to do. I, I find that face is a little splotchy, so I will probably work on that in a little bit too. But I'm, I'm just creating a base so that I know what I'm working with with the figure. A little bit more matte medium. Um, once the, you don't want to blend it too much until the paint's dry. I think it's mostly dry when I'm doing this, and I hope so anyway. <laughs> and that way, the matte medium sometimes does a little bit of extra blending for us, but again, it keeps um, blending the, the image itself with the background. And that's what you want to do. You want to aim for that because you don't want it to look like pieces of cut out photographs plunked onto the canvas. The, bet, the more that you can blend and blend the edges of the matte medium into the photo, the better results you have, I think. That's my tip anyway. So I might let this dry and come back to it again and again and keep adding another layer. Um, some people have described this look as almost encaustic. And I can see what they're saying because if you get if you layer this enough, it has almost a bit of a waxy effect, and um, I like that. I think it looks uh, it, it ends up looking quite charming. And then plus, you're protecting the images on your canvas and the paint. Okay, this might be a little bit difficult to see, but I'm using a very fine brush to paint on um, a little detail on my daughter's bathing suit. And it's just a little bit of yellow, just to add um, color to her, and to, again to highlight her as a, a completed painted figure. I'm still not using a lot of paint, I'm letting the features shine through. Um, and. Uh, I've, bl I've blended the, the edges of the blotchiness on her cheeks a little bit. The matte medium has helped with that. Um, and now I'm just trimming um, a little bit of the edge of the ephemera, uh, the script and that lovely note paper. It, I didn't worry too much about it going over the edges, but I'd like it flush, so I'm just trimming it now while it's easy to do. And um, yeah, so I'm happy with this part so far. And using a little bit of um, Kleenex box or tissue box as we noted earlier. I'm just adding a few more elements just for fun. I like the colors. There's a, it's a little bit of splash of color again. It doesn't mean anything necessarily but um, design wise I find it appealing. You'll find your own um, design style when you're creating one of these portraits. Thank you. 
And because now, again, it's an artist's prerogative to change your mind a little bit, um, I found that the, the popping um, tissue box elements were just a little bit too strong, so I'm adding a little bit more white, and I'm gently covering, just putting a tinge of white color over these um, pieces just to blend them in a little bit with my piece a bit more. I like them but I think that they were distracting um, the eye from the figure. So I'm covering them up a little bit and adding a little bit more paint underneath and I will also add more matte medium. You can see that I've painted the sides of the canvas black. I didn't show you that actual process because it's um you know it's pretty straightforward i think you can figure that out that's a little tricky to do because you have to try to mine the edges but i think it completes the piece and if you are hanging it on the wall without a frame the black uh, forms um, um, a natural framing look i think and there there are some clouds in the sky <laughs> a little dash of white here and there Again, I don't use a lot of paint at this point. I'm, my brush is pretty dry, actually. And sometimes with the clouds, I'll blend them with paper too to, to get them to blend in a little more with the sky. With a children's portrait, you can be more playful. Things don't have to be absolutely accurate and uh, other than the, the figure themselves. And I enjoy doing children for that reason. Well, incredibly enough, we've reached the end of this class. I've done my blending. I'm happy with the results with the portrait. I'm hoping that you've been inspired by this class and that you will be wishing to get to your art table to start making a project of your own for someone special in your life. And even if that special person is you. So I encourage you to go and make art and enjoy yourself and look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.